How many of you absolutely hate flies? You're sitting at the dinner table, you're hanging out outside, and they're just buzzing around you in your ear. They get on your food, and you're always trying to swat them. It's nasty. It's gross, right? We hate flies. So do the bison. That's why you see that tail wagging all the time, trying to get off their back. Well, those flies almost took away one of my bison last year, Dakota. She almost died because of a horse fly bite. She spreads a disease called anaplasmosis. Today, I'm going to try to prevent that by doing a couple things around the ranch. Here's one example right here. Here we go. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Cross Timbers Bison. Today I got a little project. I'm gonna do a little bit of fly repellent work. I'm gonna put up a rub and I'm gonna put some uh, some seven dust on some uh, bison wallers. If you don't know what a bison waller is, um, it's pretty neat. So the depression in the ground where they roll and roll and roll and they always go back to the same ones. There's, there's several all over the property. Uh, that's where they dust off. Um, but we're gonna do some preventative fly maintenance today. If you guys remember, last year I almost lost a cow because of a horse fly. She got anaplasmosis, Dakota, and it, she lost so much weight, she nearly died. And uh, I had to act um, pretty quick because I knew she was getting worse and worse. So I actually had to load her up and take her to the vet and, and um, let Doc Parsons from Stratford Animal Clinic, my bison guy, really take a good look at her and it didn't take long less than a minute he looked at her saw some signs and he knew it was anaplasmosis and um, you can go back and watch one of my videos of that um, of that day of me taking her up there from then and this since the spring it's amazing how far she's came and uh, one of the reasons is because of the antibiotics that we had to get her on she's made a huge huge change and com completely taken a 180 and um, hopefully this year she'll be able So what I'm gonna do is I've got a 10 foot rub and I'm gonna mix up some concentrate. Um, everybody's told me to use this. It's uh, supposedly one of the best, um, uh, best solutions to handle the flies. I'm gonna tie it up right here. They like to come through here. This is kind of the main part of the corral. Um, so I'm gonna tie this up here. I'm gonna get that concentrate on it. Uh, fly repellent, I'm gonna put it right here so that they can rub on it. Um, and they do like to rub. They, they rub on trees, they rub on posts. Um, and so we're gonna, we're gonna see how it goes. Um, I don't know. I think Dunbar's gonna tear it up, but we might as well try. All right, so got the rub on. We'll see how it goes. I uh, just used a bunch of, I just used a bunch of uh, extra chain. These chain and clips, you can never have enough chain and clips around a, a bison ranch because uh, all of our gates and stuff, we always extra proof with chain. So now what I'm gonna do is, what I'm using is Prolate Lintox. Um, I was told by a lot of people, even cattle people, uh, that this is pretty good stuff, but it's gonna control the horn flies, help with lice, um, ticks. We don't have a lot of ticks here, um, but mostly horse flies and just the regular um, flies that are around the bison. But, um, so we're gonna mix this with diesel. I know a lot of you are going, diesel? Well, diesel, you'd be surprised, is used quite a bit on rubs like this or sprays to prevent flies. Um, guys, a simple fly, 
horn fly, uh, a horse fly, any of those can take down a, a, a bison and can take down any sort of livestock. If you've been in the livestock in industry, you know that. And I almost lost one, um, Dakota, as I've talked about several times. Um, so I'm going to mix this. I've already got two gallons of diesel. And for this rub, it says you can mix up two, uh, two gallons of your mixture. And so I'm going to add eight ounces of this uh, prolate to, um, to, the, uh, to the diesel. And then I'm going to spray it on there. That could be a problem. So much for using the sprayer. Leaking out the side of the, the hose is busted. It's always something, isn't it? Had a hose. This hose had a was busted and was leaking. Luckily, I found another one. This one's only a gallon, so I had to pour it from the two gallon to the gallon. So <laughs> maybe now we can uh, spray. gonna be a while. Okay, so something else I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try to put some seven dust on some of their bison wallers. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is send up the drone and see if I can get some good footage of what it's like up and see if I can find some of those bison wallers. I have an idea of where some of them are actually at, but um, I don't know where all of them are. And once so, I find them, I'm gonna go through and put some of that seven dust on just another preventive besides the rub that we're gonna try to keep these flies away and try to keep her bison healthy. So here is a perfect example of what a bison waller is. I say waller, like I said, it's my accent, forgive me. 
it's okay. But this is a perfect example of one right here. So some of you, <sighs> so if a lot of you don't know what a bison waller is, this is where the bison basically, this is basically where the bison um, roll around. They kind of dust off to get some, uh, get some of those parasites off of them, just kind of clean off, um, get the flies off of them. Some of that dirt helps prevent, get some of that stuff off. And um, I don't know, they just like rolling around in it. But um, anyways, we're gonna put some seven dust on this and, uh, and see how it goes. But uh, a lot of you, some of you historians, um, you can actually still see a lot of these on the Great Plains um, from, from whenever we had, um, you know, hundreds of millions of bison Actually, you can still see a lot of these depressions um, from the uh, 17, 1800s, from when we had, you know, thousands and thousands of bison, um, 30 to 60 million bison roaming around uh, the Great Plains. You can still see a lot of these depressions because uh, they just will come back to the same one or however many they have and where they're grazing and they'll hit it over time. And it'll be the whole herd that'll keep rubbing on this. And over time, that depression, it kind of sets in. Uh, they keep wallering it out. And on the Great Plains, in some places, at, when it rains, it fills up with water. And so then they drink out of it. And um, then when it dries up, they go back to using it as a, as a bison waller. And then, uh, you know, they also will lay in it after a rain when it's, if they've drank the water out of it and it gets muddy then they can lay in it and cool off as well. So it's, uh, it's pretty beneficial to the bison, uh, nature's way of, of comfort, I guess you could say, um, and cleanliness and cooling off and for water. So it provides a lot, but you can still see a lot of these in the Great Plains. Uh, a lot of ranches and farms, I know in parts of Oklahoma, there's still lots of these um, found across um, a lot of properties. So. If, uh, if you have any or you know of someone on the part of the Great Plains that has some of these, let me know. I think it's really cool. And um, it's just living history that it's still there. And to think that, you know, millions of bison came through there and kept hitting that um, bison waller, that waller, over and over and over for hundreds of years. I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Also want to make one other point. Guys, this right here, what you see is dead, is cockaburrs. And you guys know that I absolutely hate cockaburrs. Watch some of my older videos of me battling these things and they get all over our bison. But Kevin um, really hammered these things and he killed a bunch in this pasture. This is the same pasture that I burnt. Um, and uh, it had a lot of cockaburras already in it um, last year. Um, but he came through and sprayed, and man, he absolutely sapped them. So thank you to Kevin. This one's not very big. I put out about four or five of these bison wallers. Um, I put some at seven dust on them. I had about four or five good ones I thought were used quite a bit. 
So um, we did that. We've got the rub set up, and uh, now we'll just see how it goes. Hopefully, uh, it decreases those flies. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I know you didn't get to see the bison as much, uh, but this is these are things that we try to do to help uh, take care of our bison and keep their keep them keep them really healthy. Um, this kind of forces you into doing this whenever you have a situation. And last year we had a situation where we almost lost one of our, our best cows, um, Dakota. And um, it, it was really serious. And so we're going to try to do a better job. It's all about learning. And so we're going to see if, uh, if, this, if this stuff works, uh, the seven dust and then the concentrate mixture. And we're going to see if all that works uh, and see if that rub um, is uh, pretty beneficial to them. We'll see if Dunbar doesn't tear it up. Hopefully he doesn't. Um, but anyways, hope you guys enjoyed seeing the babies. Um, we've got one more due. Um, that's Quapaws. And this will be her second. And I am hoping, hoping for another heifer. We've only got one baby heifer ever part of the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch. And um, hopefully we have another heifer. So. Thank you guys for following. You can always follow us on Facebook or Instagram. You guys remember I told you I came up with a couple new t-shirts? Well, here is one of them right here. Support your local bison herd. It doesn't matter where it is, where you are, support your local bison herd. Um, if you haven't, go visit a local bison ranch. It's a great experience. Um, reach out to somebody local. Um, you can get on the Bison Central website, and I think you can find people that way. Um, the internet is amazing, so you can find uh, lots of resources on there. Um, but just ask around and, and go visit a bison ranch. And um, you know what? It's a it's a really cool experience. And, um, you know, go see what they do different than what I do. And uh, see, how, see how people do other, uh, handle other ranches and raise bison. And so if you are interested in the t-shirt... Uh, check out my website. It's on crosstimmersbison.com. Um, I'm going to have different colors of these shirts. I think I got about four different colors um, for this uh, support your local bison herd. So thank you guys for following.